and welcome to another episode of She Is Not Her Trauma. I'm your host, Jerisa Sass, your benevolent and sassy mentor, and you are in a safe space where you can embrace your truth, trauma, and transformation. And on today's episode, we have another amazing guest that will be talking about surviving the narcissistic relationship. So please stay tuned and join us after this break. your source for the latest in lifestyle, current events, music and entertainment, fashion and beauty, entrepreneurship, and more. Lady Magazine's interactive element allows you to watch videos, listen to music, and participate in surveys all within the magazine. Shopping is made easy. All you have to do is go to your favorite upcoming brand's page, click on their advertisement, and you'll be directed straight to their website. Book an appointment or find out more about some of your favorite brands by our amazing click to call or click to email feature. To create more exposure and awareness for your brand or business, make sure you email us at ladymagazine at gmail.com. That's L-A-D-E magazine at gmail.com. Or visit our website www.ladymag.com. Welcome back to She Is Not Her Trauma. I'm your host, J. Risa Sass. And on today's episode, we have Gina, one of my other sisters who will be sharing their amazing story on how she has been able to survive the narcissist relationship. So welcome, Gina. Thank you for having me. Yes, I'm so excited. So how are you today and how what's been going on with, you know, certain things with you? I'm wonderful today. (laughs) And have been for some time. It has taken me a long time to get here, but Mm. I am here. And I'm blessed and happy that you are here. So um, today is a really, 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 really necessary conversation on um, being in a narcissist relationship. Um, I think a lot of people, you know, can fit into the category. And I would love for you to first define what is a narcissist for those that do not know what a narcissist is? Well, I'm not a doctor or a psychologist, but um, generally speaking, it is someone who really is not connected um, emotionally. Um, They have either experienced some type of trauma that have driven them to find other ways to, to cope with their own internal pain and internal feelings. Um, And in most cases, they've severed the -hmm. connection between how they perceive themselves, how they perceive others that are involved with them in their life, and uh, how to generally just deal with um, others in society. Um, They're they're generally uh, selfish and are in like a state of um, ego-driven or... um, uh, places of importance. They put them pl- themselves on a pedestal and therefore are usually involved with other people who will support that. Mm. Um, they generally t- tend to find uh, partners or mates that are uh, empaths or strong in empathy because they don't possess that part of them anymore. Mm. Um, they're not able to relate um, emotionally to others. And so therefore, they will try and find that ideal person or those ideal people that will uh, balance them out in that area. Okay, so I like that definition. And with that definition, you have identified several different uh, people that this narcissist person can potentially go after when they want the relationship. So... Because you was in that relationship, which person were you that was vulnerable to falling into that narcissist relationship? Well, I am an empath. And so I ideally am, you know, supportive 
and giving and in nature, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and thrive on a loving environment or on the loving relationship. Um, and, you know, leading into most narcissistic relationships, you're gonna get that same response from that other individual that is the narcissist because their ideal purpose is to get you within the folds, um, encourage you to then become a part of their world. So they're gonna give you those things also that you seek. It's bec it becomes a learned um, behavior. Behavior, yes, absolutely. And so in in that, it's it, they know what to say, what to do to help foster that type of relationship. Right. Um, so be wait. So before you even get into that, <laughs> before you found out all of these things about this narcissist person and what basically how to identify them. What was your experiences within before you can even move to that point? Like, I mean, what were you, what, what was he abusive? Was he, like, what type of things did you experience within this relationship for you to say, okay, well, now I know how to identify this person? Well, it took a better of probably 10 years for me to get out of it. Four years into it, it became, you know, violent mm -hmm. in nature. Um, it was not, uh, something I was aware of or obvious to me initially so. because the actual actions of that person d slowly were in development. Right. Um, it was psychological initially right. and then became more physical and things of that nature. So um, typically a person that is actually within the relationship or is only under the impression that, okay, they are, they are experiencing true love or true affection from that individual because that is what they're displaying. Um, but their desire or need or dependence upon the empathic person um, begins to diminish. You know, we as people, we, we're human. Um, we have our own needs and, and desires. The needs and the desires of the oppressed never get to develop to fruition as long as you're involved with the narcissist. You'll never see that. Um, so you recognize the oppressed part of it, of you, but then it's your decision and your, uh, I guess, uh, resolution that has to develop. Okay, well, how am I going to overcome this? Is it truly what it, I think it is? You know, a lot of it is deceit and manipulation mm -hmm. upon the part of the narcissist. So you almost question yourself all, at every turn. You know, you're not really sure if you're making the right moves. Right. Um, to improve the relationship right. or things that you're doing making it worse. Right. So after the break, I would love for you to share with us your truth in regards to how you got to this point of wanting to share your story today. So please stay tuned and join us after this break. <laughs> Welcome back to She Is Not Her Trauma. I am your host, Jerisa Sass. And right before the break, we were speaking to Gina in regards to how she has been mm, coping with dealing with a narcissist in her relationship. So now we're going to find out what Gina's truth is in regards to why she decided to share her story with us today for the very first time. So Gina, <laughs> let us know. What's going on? Like, how have how did you reach this point today to say, I will now accept my truth on what I experienced to be able to open up and share it with the world? Well, I think for the most part, I know that 
a lot of women were experiencing what I was women, uh, experiencing, not necessarily um, women. There are men also experiencing the same thing with, with female narcissists. Um, but I thought that uh, I've seen an awakening happening mm. in, the, in the recent years. Um, and it may be because it's now uh, more a diagnosed behavioral yes. uh, deficiency. But what I was thinking was, okay, you know, a lot of people don't take the next step and go and seek psychiatric help um, mm. or speak to family or friends about what's happening within the home um, and therefore can't see those symptoms for, you know, for themselves. themselves. Mm -hmm. And so being able to, you know, share my story, I hopefully, you know, this will give other people who are Well, no, hopefully, because we not want here for hopefully. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 hopefully. We, so we, 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 your story will, go ahead. Yes, my story will <laughs> then be of help to others who are experiencing the same things that I was. That's right. And am, um, because it's, it, they're also, you know, after effects, PTSD, things like that, that right. are um, natural um, after coming out of something that is tra traumatic. Yeah. Um, so this was definitely an opportunity I felt was uh, something I wanted to take advantage of to um, get the word out. Right. So it was it like um, so did you reach like one point in in the relationship or maybe when you decided that you wanted to transition from the relationship that you say it stated that I I really, really, really need to heal for myself and learn who Gina really is. Yes. And um 2014, I believe it was, um, I took a deep look at everything that was going on. And to be honest with you, it started out with my decision to go natural. Mm, okay. I um, did the big chop. In experiencing the big chop, the big chop also was like a revelation to me. Um, of who I was. You, get, you give me butterflies, girl, because you sound like you're about <laughs> to say something I know about so well. So go ahead. <laughs> of, you know, just a re revelation of who I was, who I wanted my identity to be, and how making that decision to do that um, said volumes, both physically and mentally, to those around me. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to do it, you know, years prior, like in 2011, but the person that I was involved with, you know, had already trained my mind or trained mm. my ideas into believing that that was not a good move for me, that that was and not that is... the best decision for me. Mm -hmm. um, and being in that relationship and so strong in it within that time, I felt like, okay, well, well, maybe there's some, some truth to this. I'll, I'll hold off and maybe it, it's not right. There we go justifying ourselves <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely and so when but when i did make that decision other things began to evolve around me and about me and for me um it was no longer me living for his ideas his thoughts that's right it was no longer me believing that he knew what was best for me mm -hmm. or what was best for the relationship or otherwise um, we had a deep relationship because it was built on a business relationship initially, mm -hmm. developed into friendship, then developed into intimate. The intimate relationship. And because all of those components were intertwined, the life with him felt like it was the life I was supposed to be living. And right, because he was there for all areas of it. Right. Me? And so therefore, you know, his opinion mattered just that deeply to me, but not knowing that that I was being manipulated at the same time. But you stated that you his 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 opinion mattered, but it didn't matter. But usually, when we say that, there's something within us that we're doubting. So, was there something that you were doubting at that time about the you that you allowed him to overpower what was going on with you, within yourself, the decisions that you made, and stuff like that? Like it has to be something like we like some type of little self confidence, something that we just you know because um like you said like the person that you are your personality style like you just want to be loving you want to help. I know for me a lot of times I got into a lot of relationships because I was looking for that emotional connection right. No, I wasn't missing my father, um only 
but I also was missing my mom, right? So regardless of the fact, you know, usually they say, okay, well, she's, you know, she's looking for a, a man and her father, but it's just, I was looking for love in general. Oh. And so it had to be something for you to say like, okay, you were at that weakest point. So what was it? I think it more had to do with um, Asian development. There were certain things in my mm -hmm. life that are, I thought I needed in my not life by a certain point. Mm -hmm. um, there was also a deep rooted biblical, um, I guess you could say, um, upbringing that would have solidified some of the ideas that I had at the time, meaning I needed to be married. I needed mm -hmm. to, uh, uh, at that time I already had two adult children um, or close to being so adult. you didn't want to, and you so, wasn't married, so you didn't want to have, keep your children on the wedlock. Well, I had been married twice before. <laughs> okay. Um, so this was just a, the the third would have been the third, you know, and I and I didn't want, um, and never wanted to necessarily be in a relationship with one, with someone just on a temporary basis. Absolutely. Um, so there was that goal in mind to be married, to be, you know, so that was another reason for sticking in there. And it's like, I've already been in here for three years or four years, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So let me get to that point. Um, so that was also um, something that kept me within that relationship, not moving on or making the decision to step out and go find something that may have been better or conducive to, you know, my search. Absolutely. Um, and in doing, in doing so, all these things played a factor in my staying within that relationship. Yep. Um, not, you know, to, 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 you know, to slight any of, you know, the blame or anything like that right. from him or give him, you know, reason or, or cause to, 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 to stay and do the things that he did. But at the same time, um, I knew that that was the basis of my, you know, staying uh, for the length of time that I did. In the decision to, to get out and move on, um, I think that was more looking at my, my daughter and not wanting her to think this is the life that she was, I was gonna ask you that. <laughs> going to going to, to have to lead or be leave. Um, I, I didn't want that to be the impression. Right, so do you feel like you stay because of the children? Uh, to a degree, yes. That also being, you know, partly because of, when I say the manipulation, his manipulation in, th in, in believing always I could use this piece of information right. to, to dangle, it to right. dangle <laughs> and, you know, her, you know, keep her emotions in check. Yep. Um, keep reiterating, you know, the importance of my daughter to me and my yes. part, the importance of my daughter, you know, uh, from his perspective not wanting to break up the family and things of that nature. So those were all like used and tax tactics that were um, used on a regular basis to facilitate how we're going to move as a as a unit. Right. So how how have you been able to break that cycle? Um, well, in leaving, um, well, I didn't have a I, it led, you know, things were leading to the point where I didn't have a choice. Um, I've been abducted three or four times. Um, wait, what? Abducted? Yes, abducted, meaning the, by the by the by the husband? Yes, or just being taken, you know, driven somewhere, you know, fear, you know, being implemented, yes. things of that nature, so just over things, over right? the over a course of time. So it was it was it was, there were tactics and and things that were used to manipulate how I saw them. Yes how I saw the need to have them there, even to the point where, okay, I was the only person that could help them. Mm. I would, would be both the victim and the person that would, they would consult for help and assistance in. And there was no way that was gonna happen. There was no way you could have ultimate sympathy or empathy for someone who was causing you damage. Absolutely. So from a human that. standpoint, it's like, you, how do you, how would you think that that would even be possible? Right. So it got to that level to where over, even though I helped him resolve or come to the root of his issues, um, 
I could not stay in the relationship to uh, help him find solution. Right. And I just want to say to you that I'm thankful for you today for being brave to at least even share your story for the first time. Like so many people are unable to do that. And I just want to say thank you. I really appreciate you. And you are very strong for that. So after the break, we will find out how we can get in touch with Gina and, you know, move forward with everything else. So please stay tuned and join us after this break. We gon' get your money right, we gon' need your mind Building things, hopes and dreams, one step at a time It's the queen blueprint, welcome to the movement Cash rules, everything around me, cream academy Everything you wanna do, you can do it, and queen can dance, got the blueprint Understand the mind, get the money in line, making boss moves one step at a time Want a house, want a car, you can have it Notch credit just to match that Any question that you have just ask that Cause all I know is Life is what you make it Power in your hands I can give you all the tools Just tell me your plans Let's talk habit, let's map action It's a real quick back on man Welcome back to She Is Not Her Trauma. I'm your host, J. Risa Sass. And right before the break, we spoke with Gina in regards to her amazing story that she has shared with us for the first time today on surviving a narcissist relationship. So now, Gina, can you please share with the guests on how they can get in touch with you, share your contact information and things like that? Certainly. Um, well, I'm Gina Hawkins, and I'm the CEO of A Perfect Type. We are a business consulting and marketing firm. Uh, essentially work with mostly start startup companies who are looking to uh, build practices um, to help their business grow as well as develop other ways that they can market their business. Um, you can reach me either by um, following me on social media at a perfect type. Um, I'm on Twitter and on uh, Instagram and all of those are on the same handle, a perfect type. Uh, you can also find my personal um, LinkedIn as well as my Facebook at Gina Hawkins, and that's J-E-A-N-N-A -N -N -A, Hawkins. Thank you, Gina. Gina, oh look, I'll see, I keep always. <laughs> thank you, Gina. Thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate you, and like I said, thank you so much, and I hope that you come back for a second recording, taping, telling us all this good stuff you got. Thank you. Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Okay, guys, so um, we just had an amazing story that we heard, and I would just like to leave you guys with a little bit of information on how you can find self-benevolence within a narcissist relationship. Dealing with someone who has a narcissist personality is simple, simply accepting that this is who they are. There's not much you can do or change, so always remember that. Here's some action steps that you can take in order for you to be able to deal with um, being with the narcissist. So you can break the spell. If you must deal with the narcissist personality, don't allow them to change your sense of identity or define your world. You matter too. Speak up. If it's someone that you like to keep close in your life, then you owe it to yourself to speak up. Try to do this in a calm, gentle manner. Set boundaries. They might think that they're entitled to go where they want, how they want, snoop through your personal things, you know, control everything about you, but you are to tell them how you feel. Maybe they give you a little bit of advice or anything like that, but just make sure that you don't allow them to control exactly everything about you. And remember the truth. Remember your truth and why you are engaging in your healing process because you know that you are not allowed to let anyone change who you are really truly inside. 
So with that being said, I would like to thank everyone for tuning in today. And if you have a story that you would like to share on She Is Not Her Trauma, you can contact me at jresa, J-A-Y-R-E-S-A, at benevolentandsassymentor.com. Until then, tune in on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. on the Promote Her Channel Network. And also remember that a peaceful mind is a benevolent one.